you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant. Them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord.
Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is a reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away. She keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. And she said, please, Lord, for even the dogs, eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. And Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the ones was in the inner circle, part of the club, one of the boys. Begins to sink, we heard last Sunday. And Jesus looks at him and says, you of little faith. All of his affiliation, all of his connection, his history, who he knew, little faith, failure of the moment. And then today, this was a Canaanite woman. Not just a pagan, but a pagan from an area of notorious pagans. Definitely an outsider. Second, she was a woman speaking to a man in public. Completely taboo in that culture. And then she was asking for a favor, not for her son, who would have had some merit in that culture, but for her daughter. And Jesus, at first, seems to be rather rude, and yet he's simply putting into words what was in the thoughts of the disciples. Get rid of her, she's being a nuisance. So then Jesus says, it's not right to throw food to the dogs. And they're probably going, well, that's right, that's right. Well, even the dogs get the leftovers that fall from the master's table, she says. And Jesus' response to this pagan outsider, your faith has saved you. You of great faith. She didn't belong to the club. She was outside of a lot of the circles. She was already being whispered about by actually those who knew better. 
you of great faith. That's what it comes down to, you know. Isaiah, in the first reading, says, the Lord's desire is that all will come, and my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people, not the select few, not those of a particular race or culture or background, but all of them, a mixed bag. St. Paul, in the second reading, speaks of Jews and Gentiles being given the offer of this fullness of life. Not a little bit for some, and a little bit more for others. We profess in the creed, and hopefully we say it slowly, prayerfully, and thoughtfully, and not rush our way through it, because there are four words within it that we say that today invites us to think about. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. Catholic means universal, means this house for all peoples, means that no, there is not the outcast who doesn't get invited to know the mercy, to know the healing, because they haven't been long enough. In my own life as a priest, I have had my own faith greatly stirred up and inspired. Not by self-proclaimed lifelong Catholics who pride themselves in their devotional lives and their practices, but by those who were very far away from that, but who honestly looked at what the Lord could do in their life, began with the humility of repentance. And whether it be through RCIA or returning Catholics, or young people who faithfully live out the faith that their parents never brought them up in or treated as surface. That's where the inspiration comes from nine times out of ten. Those that would be, I guess, considered by some who want a label on the outside. Like it or not, we're Catholic, universal. That means all. The scriptures today invite us to ask, how wide is my embrace? What can I learn from the most unlikely? Peter, who had the end, who sinks because of his little faith, or this woman who they thought was on the outs, whose faith by Jesus is called great. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejecting all forms of exclusivity, we bring our prayers to the Father, embracing all, trusting in his mercy. For deep appreciation, reverence, and love to characterize our coming to this house of prayer, 
and be a tangible witness to our faith in His real presence here and the setting for authentic, joyful, and loving worship always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, our Bishop, our Pastor, and all shepherds to never take for granted the great gift of their call to pastoral service in the Church and to be ever mindful of their accountability to God for their ministry of word and sacrament, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may all strive to consistently observe what is right and do what is just in every aspect of our life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That realizing how much we have been given, without it being earned or deserved, may lead each of us to greater attentiveness to opportunities to share our time, talent, and treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the dead, especially Greg Guerra, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, to be admitted into the company of the saints, giving praise around the throne of the Lamb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for all who have asked for our prayers and for the needs of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, all this we ask, Father, in trusting faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in singing number 525, You Are the Healing, number 525.
Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you've given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of grace that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and an exaltation we acclaim. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and offer you the bread of life and chalice of blessing. Look a favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. 
Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and the resurrection give them fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that, confirmed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Word of thanks to those of you who joined us for movie night this week. It was a wonderful opportunity for families with teens. I continue to emphasize that one of the greatest forms of youth ministry is providing things that give our young people um, some information that then can be opened up, both in family and then when we offer opportunities uh, in community. So it was wonderful to share uh, that movie night convinced uh, this past week. Another great opportunity for folks of all ages uh, is next Saturday night. We've been advertising it. Details are in the bulletin. It's the summer fiddle and guitar concert on our grounds. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock. You can come. The grounds open at 5. Bring a picnic dinner, bring a blanket, lawn chairs. All of it's in the bulletin. So we urge you to join us. Again, this is something for folks of all ages. As you leave the church today, there are a couple of tables set up. One has information for our women's scripture studies, Walking with Purpose. Again, this has been in the bulletin, but there are live people there for sign up or information. And this week we had a wonderful experience of training for Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, a new program we're introducing aimed at our littles, ages three to five. We invite parents to an open house uh, next Sunday. The details of that are in the bulletin. But there's some folks outside. If you would like to make an offering to help, there's numerous different expenses that are involved in equipping the area where the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd will, will create a learning environment for children. So you can find out more about it, or you can simply leave a free will offering. It'll be deeply appreciated. That's set up outside as well. Registration forms for all levels of family faith formation in the lower school are available at the doors of the church. Next Saturday is the solemn feast of Our Lady of Częstochowa, the Black Madonna. Please notice that the morning mass on Saturday and everything attached to it is an hour later than usual. That's very clear in the bulletin. And there are some blue flyers next to the bulletins that have a little history of Our Lady of Częstochowa and a beautiful litany that can be prayed individually or as a family throughout this week. A very unique one to this Madonna who bears scars and who helps a scarred and wounded world. So we invite you next Saturday morning, join us at nine o'clock. I'll grab one of the blue flyers to lead up to it with prayer. There are various other things that are uh, fully outlined in the bulletin, so be sure to give it a careful read. Thank you to those who filled out the stewardship survey. It's in the bulletin one more time. This is the last chance. We have great diversity of gifts of great diversity of ages. And so we're very, very grateful um, for that. The Scott Hahn tickets are going very quickly. There are just a few left. If you want to join us for this great opportunity on Saturday, September 16th, as we welcome internationally known speaker and author Scott Hahn as part of our Eucharistic Awakening, please see me or come tomorrow morning after either of the masses. Dominic will be here with tickets. But this evening, uh, you can see me outside. Uh, there's a lot more, so be sure to give the bulletin a careful read. I heard this week, both from Christian, who safely made it to Indiana, uh, told him to eat some corn for me, and Father Joseph, who in just a few minutes will be celebrating his first weekend at Divine Mercy Parish. And we want to uh, wish a great academic year to our college students, who are some of them going for the very first time, uh, some of them heading back. And I want to particularly point out Xavier. Uh, I'm always grateful to him. He's going back for his for college and always one of the first things that happens when he's coming home is I get a text telling me when he's coming home and he offers himself. Don't take it for granted, parish community. I can only say that because some of, sometimes we just do it. Do we thank our young people? Do we thank them? We shouldn't take it for granted. This ain't the story in many places. I hear the envy of many priests, but it's because of the kind of community we are and what we create. Don't take it for granted. We are so blessed. So thank you, Zadie, for your continued service to your family. And there's a whole new lineup as well. Um, among them, a young man who 
received his first communion and confirmation. Um, he's going to be 15 years old. He was not brought up in the faith, didn't even know he was baptized. On his own initiative, he explored our faith. I confirmed him right here last May. He's going to start training to be a server. That's what this gospel is talking about. Those who we think are on the outs, which actually teach us what it means and to appreciate to be within all of us in the heart of Christ. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forth to glorify the Lord by your life. Please join together in singing number 629, Lord Whose Love in Humble Service, number 629. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs> 